Hi everyone. Hi. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. My name is Sherilyn Smart. I'm Redken's educator, and I'm here today with Redken and Salon Centric with Patricia Nicole, Hi guys. aka Painted Hair. <laughs> and we're so excited to share with you some of our new techniques with our gels and our lightener. Yes, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get some great coverage and include some balayage in your services. Uh, something that's quick and easy for you guys to take back to the salon for your clients and just kind of get the best of both worlds. So over here I'm going to introduce you to my model. This is Sandra. Hi. So as you can see she's ready to get her Gray's cover. This is what we're starting with. And I'm also going to be uh, bringing up her blend, so that's going to be something for you guys to see too. So uh, I'm excited to show you everything and get started. And here we go. So uh, one thing I want to talk to you guys about too is that we're going to be giving, doing a giveaway. So make sure that you guys uh, feed in your questions, comment, and uh, just let me know how, how it's going and if you have anything. Um, I also have Sherilyn here and Spencer behind the camera who's going to be feeding me all the questions I can answer for you. So uh, yeah, so I guess we're going to get started now. And I just want to talk to you guys a little bit about what I mixed up. So for my mix, I used 4 in in and that's the, color, the new color gel slacker. And why the 4NN is so awesome and is going to really help you boost your gray coverage is because it has a double dose of pigment to it. It has a double tan to back, black, 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 black background. So it's going to give you that extra boost of coverage that um, sometimes, you know, we need, especially when someone has, you know, the stubborn grays um, or they just have a lot of them. So as you can see, this is kind of what we're working with. Um, and then I also use the flash lift with Bonder inside and with 20 volume, just to give her a gentle lift, um, but also a nice transition in a blend. I didn't want to go higher than 20 just because I want to make sure that whenever I'm painting her that I'm not exposing too much of the underlying pigment because she does have, um, you know, she's had great coverage over time, so I'm trying to break through that color and kind of get her moved up. So it's going to be a nice transition for her. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. Look at this cool brush, you guys. <laughs> One thing that I really want to talk about is just making sure that when you are applying the um, the color gel slackers, that you are staying in zone one. If you do need to go in and do some smudging afterwards just to kind of to blend your balayage, you can go in with shades and just kind of run that down and, and do a double melt or an application over it. Uh, I think that it will help you to create a really nice transition and a lot of stylists do it anyway. So here we go, I'm gonna get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with Sandra. I'm really gonna concentrate right in her face, right? I'm excited for you guys to see how well the lacquers cover because that's a question that I get all the time. How is the gray coverage? And I feel like the 4NN really, really changed the game because a lot of times when you have the gray coverage lines, they tend to be really, really dark or drab. And I feel like the way that the um, 4NN processes, it's so beautiful. It almost looks like natural hair. It's great. So Spencer, are there any questions? Yes. So um, when would you reach for this over a different permanent color line? If I'm doing a balayage application, actually I would reach for it all the time just because application time is so fast with it. I mean, as you can see, the liquid color just melts on. And so I really, really love that. And um, I feel like with the permanent or with the other lines or any other line, it, just the timing in itself. And I also love how beautiful and shiny this color line is. So I would reach for this pretty much every time. What uh, developer do you mix with this? I use the 20 volume peroxide. So color gels, uh, lacquers used to, ha well, before it was, when it was just color gels, they had the de dedicated developer that went with it. 
but now color gels lacquers it went back to using peroxide and maybe spencer you can speak on that a little bit as to why they decided to go back with the peroxide I, I think that as a brand, we just felt like it was more universal. Yeah. And also just for consistency purposes, uh, we were able to cut down the ammonia in the yes. color gels formula. And I think we all remember the, the old formula used to uh, definitely have a more ammoniated scent to it. And so now it's a little bit more gentle and it just makes sense. It does. I do definitely love the consistency because even though it is a liquid line, I can still really work with it and I can get through my sections pretty quickly. Would you agree that it pairs up well with Shades EQ? Absolutely, so that's another key point about the Color Gels Lockers. It is true to, it is true to, um, true to tone, so it, you will get an equal zone match. So a lot of times um, I'll use the Color Gels Lockers for great coverage, but I will also use it if I'm shifting a base. So let's just say my client is already previously lightened and I wanted to go in and make her like an RV or an RB or I wanted to make sure that I'm matching her base. I can shift the zone one just using the color gels lacquers, which is awesome. What would you say the difference is between why would you reach for a 4NN from the new Double Gels Lacquers NN series versus just the traditional 4N? So I would reach for the 4NN just because it does have that double dose of pigment to it. So it's really, really going to be great for gray coverage. Um, and somebody who needs that extra push or that extra amount of pigment, uh, for me, it's just to make sure that I guarantee that she's getting full coverage. Do you get the same shine with color gels that you get with Shades EQ? Yes, it is very glossy. It is very rich. It's really true to tone. And so, yes, that's, I, I love it for that. Um, another thing that's great about the color gels lacquer is just the, just the melting aspect of it. Like the liquid color line, it melts so beauti beautifully and it melts so seamlessly whenever you are ha hair painting. Because I do know that I have a lot of hair painters that are probably watching right now. So they're looking for a line that will work well and, and really help them with application time. Does the 4NN, uh, what is the base of it? So the base of it is, is tan and black. So it has a double tan to black background. Brown to tan. Oh, brown to tan background. So one thing that is really crucial when you do have clients that um, do have gray coverage is just mastering it, making sure when they leave, their grays are completely covered. Um, and so when you are using the 4NN in and you're processing you know, for 35, 45 minutes, you're gonna make sure that that client leaves and their color's gonna be completely refreshed. And that's a client that's gonna stay with you. Um, and that's important, you know, you want your client to be happy and so you are going to make them happy and you're going to keep them you know retain them so that's super important and how big of oh. sections are you taking here so i'm just taking like just a quarter inch sections just thin enough to be able to work you know thoroughly and efficiently so then sherilyn is going to come on in because i think she has a few things to say well, Patricia, you know what I was thinking? I was just wondering, like, you were talking about mastering gray coverage, yes. right? Would you say that's, like, where most of the income comes from? Absolutely. And yeah. I think it's really extreme of how, like, once you can master gray, that you're, they're a client for life, right? Uh, of course, well, yeah. Plus, as well as your painting, right? Because anything, <laughs> yeah. anything else is extra, but I feel like when a client, Sandra and I, prob you can probably speak to this, you're somebody who you want to see them gone completely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So when they feel like they can trust you to cover their gray, because sometimes it is hard for people to, to um, you know, get it done right. And so when they can come to you and they can get that taken care of, it's, it's very important to them. And someone's asking, will you get full coverage with the color gels? Yes. Yeah, and you know what? The NNs are made to specifically to get max, maximum coverage. You know, also with that gray coverage, Patricia, how long would you, does it affect your timing when you're doing painting hair and your base color to cover gray? It doesn't because what I do is I apply the base and then I will go in and do my balayage application, so. 
that is a time saver in itself because then I can ensure that I'm processing my color gels for the maximum amount of, of amount of time. And so that's a one that's one thing that I feel like people struggle with is when they are just doing a gray coverage application, they, it's just, I feel like they're not giving the color a uh, long enough time to oxidize and really thoroughly process. So whenever you have your base on, you can just kind of leave it and let it do its thing and it's not going to get overly dark. It's going to oxidize true to tone. And so you don't have to really worry. It's gonna be translucent, but beautiful, but full coverage and it's just beautiful. You know what I've noticed that you're working with the brush with your app? Do you ever use a bottle when you're using gels or the lacquer? So I feel like um, bottle or brush, it's totally preference. It just really depends on what you prefer. For me, I always like to work with a brush, and I think that's just because I'm a painter, so I just feel more comfortable. Um, if I am doing, like, let's say I'm doing um, a zone melt or a zone match, so what I'll do is I'll, you know, use a bottle, I'll two, use two separate bottles and I'll apply the color gels lacquers um, to zone one and then melt into zone two and three using a separate mixture in another bottle. So that makes it easy to work with. But if I'm doing just like a gray touch up and a balayage application, I just go for the, the brush and bowl. But there really is no right and wrong. You know, we're artists, so I feel like just wherever you're comfortable. So you just recommend that everybody uses what they're comfortable? Absolutely, yeah, of course. That's awesome. Someone asked if the consistency is the same as Shades EQ. It's actually got a thicker consistency. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the new gel. Um, there is a, the new gel develop, uh, processing solution for the Shades EQ. It's very comparable to that. It's just more of like a gel-like consistency. So as you can see, I, I applied to zone one, but it's not running down. It's just staying right where I put it, which is really cool. And she's almost done. I mean, if I was, if I was doing this application salon speed, she would already be done and I would already be on my way to, to getting her painted. And so what I like to do is I like to take the end of my brush because I don't want to push the product down further than zone one. So what I'll do is I'll just take the end of my brush and just kind of let everything lay down. And so now I'm turning her to the side. Do you want to repeat your formula again on what you're using? Sure. So for Sandra, I'm just using the 4 in N of the color gels lacquers, and I'm, I use 20 volume on her because her grays tend to be a little bit more resistant. So uh, normally if she just had uh, less, you know, if she had a little bit of gray, then I would use 10 volume, but 20 is perfect for her. And what's the processing time? So processing time uh, is 35 to 45 minutes. Uh, sometimes you do have clients that, you know, a little bit more stubborn. They need a little bit more processing time. So, but generally it's 30, 35 to 45 minutes. What do you love about the NMs? What do I love about the NMs? They're just, I love everything about the NMs. I <laughs> feel like, uh, one thing for me is a lot of times when you do get the great coverage, you... Sometimes the, the coverage is a little warm. And what I love about NN is that it keeps it really nice and neutral and balanced. And it's also very shiny, so it's not like flat and matte. It's, it's really beautiful. I like that it looks almost like the natural, it, it kind of mimics the natural tonality of, of hair. So that's what I love about it. That's awesome. For foilage, how do you eliminate the brassiness that's at zone two? So if you do run into that, that's when you want to, um, if you do run into some of that, which I mean, it's inevitable, it does happen. You, what you want to do is go back in with shades and kind of balance where that brassiness is and do a color melt. Um, because with gray coverage clients or clients in general that you're lifting and you're meeting with color, Unfortunately, that's gonna happen. At some point, they're gonna to touch. So you just wanna to make sure 
that that client leaves and you know they're really well balanced so yeah making sure to use the shave eq in conjunction with the color gels lacquer is perfect so i'm i'm big i'm into melting and everything so i think that's that's great when you can master the melt where did you uh start your color application and was there a particular reason so i just started on um the left side of her head, I just feel like um, I'm just used to traveling from the left side all the way around to the right side of the head. So again, that goes to preference, um, wherever you want to start, however you want to section, if you want to do four quadrants or three, you know, whatever you want to do, it's totally up to you. However you work, I would say work however you're the most comfortable, whatever's going to save you the most time. And then, so do you have any tips and tricks of how you're going to get the gray coverage and this beautiful blended look? Like what would be like start to finish what you would do? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set her up with her gray coverage. And as you can see, I just want to make sure that I'm pointing this out so you guys can see on camera. When I'm applying that color gel lacquer, it's staying to zone one. It's not melting down at all. It just stays right where I put it, which is awesome. Do you start your timer uh, before you start your application or do you start it when you finish your application? So I will start, if I'm doing, um, when I'm doing my hair painting, what I'll do is I will start my timer after I apply my- The base color? Yeah, after I apply, well, after I apply my base color, yes. Cause normally if I'm doing like a balayage touch up, then I can apply that so quickly. And so, yeah, I'm so excited to show you guys the finished results. So make sure you guys stay tuned too because you'll be able to see um, where she started and make sure that you guys get all the visuals for you know the front and the back and then kind of see where she's at. Make sure that you guys are dipping your brush and following around the front of the hairline. You just wanna make sure that you saturate those really well before you start your painting. Where can you find the new NNs? So that is a, so you can find the new NNs at Salon Centric and they're, they're also available now. Yeah, so they're all available now. Through your rep at Salon Centric. Can they only get them through the rep or can they go into they the They can go into the store. Okay, so it's in the store. Perfect. How many of you have tried the color gels lacquers? We got a, a few them? people, yeah. And for the, there's, somebody just asked, is 20 volume best for stubborn grays? I, I say yes. I, I feel like if you just use 10 volume, sometimes you're gonna run into the situation where you don't have enough of the lift to be able to open up the cuticle and allow the color molecule to deposit. So you, the 20 volume just really, really allows you to um, get in there and get that resistant gray cuticle open. So yeah. And somebody else just asked, where can you get the brush? Oh, okay. Let me talk about this really quickly before I start the application. So this is the extreme coverage shades. This is the kit. And so the brush comes in the kit. So you have the four in in and the six in in. That's just awesome. So you guys make sure you're make sure, commenting. Make sure you're commenting because 10 of you can win this kit. So that's exciting. All right, now I'm gonna start painting. So one thing I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about what we're doing with Sandra is um, Sandra touches up her gray at home sometimes if <laughs> she can't get in to see me. So um, she, we're working with a little bit of banding that she has. Um, I'm not going to drop her level to match this band. I'm going to be working in sessions to push path, past that band. So a lot of times when a client comes in and they want to get more to a lighter base or a zone, um, then that's something that you have to really talk with them about and let them know like, hey, we're gonna, I'm not gonna keep your base as dark as what that band is, we're gonna work past it. So 
for her, I'm just going to lighten over this band and I'm just going to do a partial just because we have 20 minutes. So I wanna make sure that you guys are able to watch it. Uh, yeah, so now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna be mindful of not combing down too much. So I'm just gonna take, honestly, I'm gonna go in here. There's a little bit more. So you wanna bring this down just a little bit where um, you wanna make sure that your zones are completely, all of the gray is covered. So whenever you're lifting up your sections, be mindful of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take her section I'm just gonna divide it into, and I'm gonna leave a middle area. This is going to be a low light, so you just wanna drop that. And then, so this is gonna be the first section that I'm gonna paint. And again, I am using um, the flash lift with the bonder inside and 20 volume. So I'm gonna get right in, and then I'm just gonna paint Somebody just asked, does this cover gray completely? I think in regards to the- Yeah, it's 100% gray coverage. So the key to it is just not, is being patient with it and allowing to process the maximum processing time and then watching it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my brush. I love this brush for painting. And I'm just gonna meet it. I'm not gonna meet it exactly. So her ends tend to be a little bit drier. So I'm, I'm gonna hang on to this end, and what I'll do is when she's finished, I'll go through and run the lightener just through her ends very quickly, because I don't, I don't want this to process on her ends. And I also am going to just do surface painting. I'm not gonna completely saturate. So if you can see the bottom of the hair, I'll lift that up so you can see this section. That's awesome. So somebody asks, flash lift with what inside? It's the flash lift with the bonder inside. So you don't need anything additional with it. You can just, you don't need to use uh, any other bond additive. You can just go straight into painting, which is really cool. That is awesome. So I'm gonna take my cotton, and this cotton's gonna help me keep my section really, really clean. Somebody also just asked, um, what happens with the lightener, touch, lightener touches the root color? Is that what the cotton is for? Uh, yeah, so the cotton just kind of keeps the lightener from really touching that root color. If it does, and uh, you know, there has been fair people say, whenever you apply a base, I always wonder about the warmth in between uh, zone one and zone two. If that does happen, you can control that wor warmth by um, doing a color melt using Shades EQ. So making sure that you have both in your arsenal, like making sure that you have both available to you. And when you would do the color melt is after the client has already processed and they've already lightened, then you can go back in afterwards, after you've rinsed them out and you can, you know, apply your color melt. Perfect, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you all for all the questions. Yeah, I'm so cool. I'm so glad that you guys are like on here and talking, it's really awesome. What volume did you use with the lightener? I just used 20 volume. And that's actually what I'm gonna do with Sandra because I know that she has this band that I want to, um, I know that she has this dark banding of color. And so I wanna make sure that I'm completely um, balancing and melting it out. So I'm gonna do a color melt on her when we're all done. Somebody just asked, what is a color melt? Okay, so a color melt is whenever you apply a darker tone and you melt it into a lighter color. So that's why shades is really awesome because like say you could use like a 5N or 5NW and you can melt it into a 9NW and it just creates that balance that you need and, and a nice transition to get a seamless painting. Why would you use such a low developer when she is so dark? I would think to go with 40. Okay, so the reason why you... Okay, again, this is all artist preference. I totally... For me, I, there are no rights and wrongs. It's just whatever you're comfortable with, I would say. So for me, I don't really ever, and most of my clients are all dark hair. So most of them are level two, three, four. 
So what I found is that when I'm using a higher developer, I'm using something like 40 volume, I'm exposing too much of that underlying pigment. So instead of being in a rush, I tell my clients, this may take a couple of sessions. So that way I can lift the client and balance them without exposing too much warmth underneath, which is what is gonna happen naturally. So um, 20 volume is enough. Remember that the lift comes from the lightning powder and the 20 volume is just the catalyst for that. So you should get enough lift just by using 20 volume. Um, and like I say, try it on a mannequin head, try it on a swatch, try it, get a model and just really, really work with all the developer levels and see, see the results, you'll be really shocked. So low and slow. <laughs> and really take your time with painting, make sure that you are really blending everything out. And so as you can see, if you're up close, I'm not really painting into that base color at all. We had somebody earlier comment saying they love shades. Well, we love you too. Oh. And like I said, you're gonna get that double-sided um, kind of like two-tone effect when you just do the surface painting. What is the maintenance like on here? The maintenance? So easy whenever your client comes back in and you want to do another session it's gonna be so cool because all you have to do is apply your base and then go right in and start your painting up it's just so easy yeah Sam and I love the way that um, I'm gonna go in and just kind of add now, a lot of these tones that she already has in her hair, I'm gonna go in and um, use those to blend with what I'm painting now. So she's gonna ha have all kinds of different tones in her hair. For the newer viewers, or some of you who just joined are asking uh, why there is no lightener on the ends. The reason why is because as you can see up close, her ends are a little bit compromised, they're a little bit, you know, they, they can't really handle the process. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna leave them out and then I will just run lightener over them when I'm finished processing very, very fast for like five minutes and just pull all that old color off. Cause you don't really, they're already light. You don't need to fully process them anymore. So you can, the one thing that I like about painting, tip your head just a little bit for me, is that you have the freedom to pick and choose what areas need to be lightened, what areas you can kind of leave out, and you can go from there and customize it so that way you're not damaging the hair and running over hair that doesn't need to be relightened again. So I'm gonna paint down, see I can tell that her ends are a little fragile, so I'm not gonna run that lightener all the way down. I'm just gonna work in the areas that I kind of wanna, and then I'm gonna work upwards. and just work really, really nicely. Why would you start your balayage application at the top and work your way to the bottom versus starting underneath and working your way up? Just because I wanna start in the top, just to give it a little bit more processing time, just to give a little more push. I mean, I just kinda do it this way. But then again, it just really depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to leave that there. There we go. And like I said, I'll run lightener through her ends when she's all done. So now we're moving on to the back. And so all of the hair that I left out in the section, how it's not saturated underneath, it's almost like creating a lighten and a low light effect all at the same time because you're not fully saturating the panel. Would you say that's how you prevent it from getting chunky? Because that was one of the questions Absolutely. earlier. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you just don't want it. You don't want a thick, fully, you know, you don't want a thick stripe. You just want to make sure that it's all surface. What's your desired end result? 
Um, with Sandra, uh, it's really hard because it just depends on what her hair will do. So a lot of times when you have clients that do have gray coverage, you have a goal, but whether or not you're able to achieve that goal, that's a different thing. So I just say, let's lighten it and see what we're able to lighten to and then kind of formulate from there. But then again, I think that's the truth for most any anyone's hair that you're doing. You, you don't really know what you're gonna get. You just kind of work with whatever the hair will lift to. So for Sandra, she's somebody who gets gray coverage all the time. So if you think about it, all those bands of color have grown out. So what I wanna do and what her hair is capable of doing are two different things. So, yeah. Make sure I just kind of clip this. Um, can I, when you hand me a foil, just a black piece of, or you know what, I can do this. You can use your cotton as a separator. Oh yeah, here's some foil. Perfect, thank you. So now I like to use a piece of foil whenever I am doing hair painting. And now remember guys, this is a partial. So I'm just gonna go in and just do a partial application on her. Do you charge differently when you do a partial balayage versus a full balayage? Um, of course, yeah. A lot of times um, though, most of my clients get a full balayage. It's just for right now because I only have 20 minutes. <laughs> so I only have to, but yeah, I would definitely charge differently if I was just doing a partial. But for me, the way that I price, let me have you look down just a little bit for me, perfect. The way that I price is that I don't charge per service, I charge for the session. So I charge for, for the hours that I'm working or the time that I'm putting into it because a lot of times, I am doing more than just hair painting. I'm doing a melt, I'm using, um, you know, all the products that I'm using. Maybe sometimes I'm adding a gray, you know, gray touch up to it. So I just give them like around a full price versus like breaking it all down. And, but everyone charges differently. So like, let's just say it takes me three and a half hours for each client, then I'm just gonna charge the same. And so your goal again with the balayage, because a lot of people were getting a lot of questions about, well, if you're going to rinse the color, will the ends be light enough by the time you rinse it? Uh, but would you say that your goal isn't to make it, you know, as blonde as possible? You're no, just that's trying not to my break goal. it up. I'm just kind of trying to break up what she already has, give some lightness, and then I'm going to do a color melt on her to kind of bring everything together and uh, create a beautiful you know tonal transition so for her it's not to get her as blonde as possible it's just to kind of uh, you know demonstrate how you'll be able to use both of them at the same time yeah, I think that's perfect so as you can see where I'm applying the lightener I'm just barely feathering it up towards zone one really trying to be mindful not to melt the two together and as you can see underneath, she's still super clean and dark under there. And then I like to use that. Is there a reason you use cotton versus cellophane? Or foil or? I use, I do use foil to incubate. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll take foil and I'll just lay that over. And I'll demonstrate that right now. So like on the side pieces, what I'll do is I'll just take foil and I'll lay them over just like that. And then I'll also take another piece of foil and just kind of lay that over. So somebody asked, so hair painting isn't necessarily just to go super blonde. It's more to bring lightness and dimension. Absolutely, yes. And over time, you will get super light. Just because you have to think, let's just say that you're lightening three, two to three, three to four levels each time. So in two sessions, think about how many levels you're going to be able to lift. So I feel like whether you're doing highlights and lowlights or whatever you're doing. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of just removing the sides of the hair because I don't want to connect the hair painting. I want to leave dimension in the hair. So I just kind of push those over to the side. How do you judge how thick of sections you're taking? 
I just want to see how her hair, like I look at how her hair would naturally fall. And so that allows me to d determine how much of, like I would call this a low light, a low light I just want to leave out. Because I know that when this hair is painted and it, and it all falls, it's all going to fall beautifully. Awesome. I feel like I feel like it's going by so fast. 20 minutes is So yeah. I know you guys get to watch me do this and honestly a lot of people ask me, "How do you achieve your looks?" Hair painting. That's all I do. <laughs> I mean, I'm incorporating a little bit more foils now uh, just to brighten up like the money piece around the face, but my whole business is hair painting. So all the looks that you see that's how I achieve them. And a lot of times it's just patience, having a client come in for, you know, one or two or three sessions to get them where they want to be. You know, a lot of times that's just what's required for any service you do, really. So, Patricia, what do you think the importance is of talking about that all up front with your guests when they come in? I think it's important to ask your client what their goals are. Do they want to be really light? Do they want to be multidimensional? What... I, I would say ask, show them your page because a lot of times and what I'm seeing now which is so important are a lot of stylists are showcasing the work that they like to do. So have a client give you an example from your own page of what it is they want or what their goal is for their hair. Um, obviously they know that each individual um, head of hair is different so you won't be able to exactly give them that. So underneath, nice and clean, just drop your cotton in today. And that's just making sure that you're keeping all of the color in zone one where it needs to be. Um, sorry, getting back to what we are talking about. Yeah, if they can't get that, let's, let's say somebody wants to be super light, but they're not going to get there in one session. Oh, consultations, everything. You have to make sure that you are talking with your client. You're, and I actually have a YouTube I just posted my first YouTube video, <laughs> well, Woo! my second one, but um, I talked about client consultation and I kind of, I go through the steps of why it's important to make sure that you, you're on the same page with your client goal wise and that you tell them like you under, you under promise and over deliver in a sense, you know, and sometimes hair painting is not, not everyone's always a, a candidate for hair painting. Sometimes you have clients who need a color correction first before they can even think about hair painting, you know? So, thank like you. That. Are you gonna do the same thing to this side as well? Yep, the I'm right just gonna side? cover it, you know, I'm just gonna move it on over and do the same exact pattern that I did on this side over to this side. And so while she finishes up this look, we're gonna let her get her work done. But thank you so much, Patricia. And you guys stay tuned because we're gonna post the finished results. Yes, I'm so excited. And uh, don't forget, you guys, comment and 10 of you are gonna be winning the uh, really cool Color Gels Lacquers kits with the wide brush Patricia was using. Yes, so let me actually show you this one more time. <laughs> Cause you know you guys wanna get your hands on it. <laughs> This wide brush is so awesome. I mean, it's great. So win this kit, comment, and we'll see you guys later. <laughs>